everybody. I am going to start out with my e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. Um, my camera is not great, so it's not going to zoom very well for y'all. I'm going to hopefully be getting a new camera soon. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and what I normally do is I try and follow my normal eyebrow line um, as they are on my face and I fill it in really, really dark. I want to try and get every single crevice and every single bit of my eyebrow colored in. I don't ever really necessarily like seeing different colors in my eyebrows. I like it to be a nice dark color and as you can see there it's not perfect lining um i definitely make sure that all my color is in my eyebrow first before i really care about the detailing of my eyebrows and i wear contacts so stuff gets in my eyes all the time you're gonna see me screw with my eyeballs a lot i would love to wake up and be able to just see and that'd be nice but i can't not yet Hopefully in the future I'll be able to get some eye repair work so that I don't have to deal with contacts anymore because I do not like them. They make life a little difficult. Okay, same thing, just going to fill in all my color. I try and keep the shape, as you can see, and I use my fingers a lot. Um, I kind of look at all my makeup as artwork and even in my artwork, I do utilize my fingers to fix things, so do the same thing with my makeup. I know it's not recommended because of oils on your hands, but I wash my hands thoroughly before I start doing my makeup. Um, and I definitely always disinfect and put on really good sunscreen and everything on my face to also protect from everything I'm doing. And it's mainly around my eyes. I use a lot of my fingers. Um, a lot of my brushes and everything get used around my face. And sorry about that. I have four dogs and a cat. So I'm sure they will bother me quite often during my videos. For now. Until I can get a room set up to where they don't bother me doing these things. Alright, now I'm going to take my brush. It's an angled brush. I'm still working on getting more brushes. Um, this is also an e.l.f. concealer. I'll get better about telling you what colors. Of course, your colors are going to differ depending on what color you are. I always use a lighter color to do around my eyebrows to shape them. And like I did right here, I just dabbed a little bit on my hand. Then I'm going to flatten it out and go in and just shape my eyebrows. Like I said, I'm still working on a better setup, so y'all are going to be able to see this a little better in the future. And hopefully with a better camera so you can see more detail as to what I'm actually doing. Because this does not zoom in very well. But hey, you know, beginner equipment. This is what I'm going to work with for a little bit, and that's fine. Okay, as you can see, I'm following my natural brow line as close as I can. And I try and make each side look as close as possible. And then you see I kind of just buff out those lines, those harsh lines that I have. Um, because you don't want that concealer to set in and then you haven't cleaned it up and you're putting on extra makeup and you have lines. It looks a little weird. Okay, I'm going to make my sides here and you can see better here kind of how that shaping takes in with the concealer and the brush it really puts in that finer detail and I will let you know if anyone ever has any problem with like your eyebrows running or you smearing it I usually don't have this problem when I use this technique the concealer kind of sets in that color and makes it stay um, I think the only real time I've ever had a problem is when I was out on the town and like it was super hot 
and I rubbed my face, forgetting that I had makeup on, and that definitely smeared it for sure. But um, that was my own fault. I sh should remember I had makeup on and not just rubbed my face like there was nothing there. I looked like a clown afterwards and had to sit in my car and semi fix it. Okay, you see, I shaved my eyebrow. Same technique. And like I said, it's not 100% perfect. Um, I do end up going back in with the pencil to define the lines a little bit better as well and to make sure that they match because, you know, it never matches the first go round. I have to sit there and double, triple check that it matches and it looks right. I'm a perfectionist and it bothers me a whole lot when they don't match. And I even ask my husband sometimes to make sure that I look even because... My eye, I have a very amazing ability of moving my eyebrows any which way, including when I'm doing my makeup. So sometimes it looks straight to me because my eyebrow is raised, and then I look straight at my husband, and he's like, yeah, that eyebrow is high. And then I have to fix it. I believe I'm actually running out of this particular pencil, so it is being a little more difficult. Um, like I said, I'm this is just like my beginning video, so I'm not... I don't have a whole lot of money put into my makeup just yet, but I am. I'll also do a video on how I pluck my eyebrows. Um, when I don't wear makeup and I just have my natural eyebrows, I do have a lot of people who like the way it's plucked and... Um, particularly how it looks and I will definitely show you all how I do that. It's super simple if you don't mind looking like a total freak like me when you do it because it is definitely a weird way of doing my eyebrows but they come out perfect every time so no complaints. My setup right now is on my kitchen table. Uh, that is a blanket behind me and honestly I'm probably going to keep using it because I do like the way it looks um with the camera I'm hoping with a better camera the colors come out a little bit better as well plus I can write on it so I feel like that's super cool um it's one of those mermaid blankets so I use that as my backdrop and I'm actually at my kitchen table my makeup's in the seat next to me so that's why I keep looking down for my stuff I'm not doing anything weird it's just that's where my makeup's at right now my setup is pretty much set up that way so and like I said um practice videoing and working on it so moving the camera quite a bit and playing around all right I did not show what palette I was using maybe I'll show you later um, I'm trying to do better about that but I'm going in with a crease brush. Brush Again, not quite sure what color. There we go. Okay, yeah. I remembered. See? I got there. Cara Duo. I like this palette. I got it from Marshalls. And you can tell I use it quite a bit. Especially the black and white. That's because when I work Saturdays, we have to be in black. So I always usually try and match my colors with my outfit. And I didn't tell you what name that was. But that's totally cool. And I actually am doing, I must be doing a, like, subtle makeup today because, oh yeah, I'm clumsy, by the way. Um, I'm doing a subtle makeup because normally I'll also do a concealer and a um, sheer primer on my eyes to make sure the color stays throughout um, nighttime or if I'm doing anything drastic, but I think I'm just trying to play with a camera today. I don't really necessarily remember because, like I said, I have been playing with these quite often. And y'all are just getting to see what I'm starting out with. So, fun times. And I'm super messy, guys. Just so you know, um, everything looks like a chaotic wreck until I finish with the product. I am not a beautiful... I'm not one of these people that can just gently swipe it on and look absolutely perfect. 
I do not do that. I like a lot of color, a lot of pigmentation, um, depending on what I'm wearing, and I definitely am messy, but I feel like messy is more fun, and sometimes I feel like messy is easier to work with. I get a lot of compliments on my makeup for how they turn out, and it's never, I never do it absolutely perfect with one swipe, and eyeliner is definitely one of my problems. Um, see yeah I'm definitely gonna get a better camera with the names so y'all can read that because I don't remember what the name of that was we'll get better guys I promise like I said we're learning okay so I'm going in and I'm putting that on my eyelid looks like I'm adding some sparkle there only thing I don't like about sparkles around my eyeballs and what I hope to look into in the future when I can afford to completely wipe out my makeup set and get a new one is I do want to look at natural biodegradable glitter um, products. Being that I don't necessarily like the fact that glitter is getting into our ecosystem and making things difficult on animals and their environment. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm poor so and learning. So... I don't have the capability of buying those things yet, but as soon as I do, I'm going to let y'all know what I use because I definitely want to promote natural and biodegradable things that help our planet. I'm going in with a lighter peach here. And you'll notice in a lot of my makeup videos, I normally do a lighter color around my eyebrows. Um, that's just more of a pre uh, personal preference. I don't really think I have a reason for it. I think I've always just done my makeup where the lighter colors around my eyebrows. I've seen other people that don't necessarily do that. And when my makeup does do a lot more, I'm dancing. <laughs> um, you'll probably see that a lot. I get, I'm super... Okay, I have anxiety and depression, and um, anxiety outweighs a lot of things as well, and anyone with anxiety can tell you that anything new, anything strange can be super altering and jarring, and so to me, talking during my makeup tutorials while I'm doing my makeup, uh, for some odd reason, gives me a whole lot of anxiety, so... Uh, yeah, y'all will either see me dance or I'm going to either be talking during a movie or mimicking the movie because that's what I do. And sometimes I'll put the videos up of what movies I'm watching. Normally it's something that I've seen a kajillion times. Um, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I was watching Austin Powers this day. No, I believe that was a different day. Or it was both days. I watch Austin Powers a lot. I'm a big Austin Powers fan. Or really any movie with multiple sequels. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Okay, so I'm actually putting a, a nice, beautiful color underneath my eye line. Um, I do that often as well. Again, it's more of a personal preference. Um, I know people that don't necessarily like putting color underneath their eyes, and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do this. If you just want to go in with eyeliner, you totally can do that too. But um, I just like the way it makes your eye pop. Um, I love that it adds a little more color to my eyes. You will notice that my eye color does change on occasion. Um, it's the magic ability of my eyeballs. They just do that. <laughs> um, depends on what colors I'm wearing sometimes and the weather. But they do change colors, so you all will notice that. It's super weird. I like it. And like I said, I like a lot of pigmentation. So sometimes once I'm actually done, I'll look at my eyes and notice that there's a certain color that's not bright enough to my taste. So I end up going in and adding even more color. And I am messy. Again, I'm going to repeat that because I don't... What's the fun of being super neat and clean. I don't think that's super fun. I think it's fun to be messy. You can see my dyed hair all up in that bun. 
Another reason I also want to look at um, natural biodegradable glitter is because glitter gets in my eyes. And again, I have contacts and contacts suck, guys. So when the glitter gets in my eyes, goes around my contacts, starts scratching my eyes, starts hurting, I have to pull my contacts out, put them back in, clean them, all that fun stuff. Um, that's going to be e.l.f. Black Eyeliner. I do use e.l.f. quite a lot. I do recommend them um, a bunch. They are avail available at so many stores. They're very affordable. Um, I am trying to get it to zoom in, and it's not going to work. I have tried multiple times with this camera, and I'm hopefully getting a new one very, very soon. And disregard bruises and scratches. You see on me, like I said, I have five animals, a cat and four dogs, so... I do look a little bit of the abused, but it is because I am by my animals. They prefer to hurt me. So, um, it's, it's painful love. They're, they're a great group of animals. They're just, they're my babies and they're a mess. So just disregard anytime because there are videos you're going to see scratches on my chest because I am still working on my puppy on jumping and one of my older dogs who I can have never been able to break her of jumping on me ever. And so I get scratches on my arms and on my chest and bruises because we play hard. And again, I have a puppy, puppy pit bull, so she is very playful all the time and is just a house hippo and will tackle me to the floor. So great times. I don't, okay, so I do use a lash curler. I am trying to leave the lash curler. I think I'm actually going to be leaving the lash curler soon. There is an item that I'm going to be buying that um, looks like it works a lot better than an eyelash curler, plus I don't have to do this and actually harm my eyelashes. I don't recommend using an eyelash curler, guys. I really don't. Um, I use it, but... I don't want to use it anymore. It really isn't helping my eyelashes grow. I think it's hurting them more than it's helping them. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely let y'all know what product I get to help with putting on my mascara and curling it without having to damage my eyelashes like this. Um, disregard all of that. Do not use an eyelash curler. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so this is something, I try a lot of weird little hacks also, just to see what works. Um, the thing I'm going to get actually is semi for this purpose as well. Um, it kind of looks like a spatula deal, and it goes behind your eyelash kind of like that too, except it's not a spoon. Um, but you know, a Purito has to do what a Purito has to do, and I have a spoon at this present time. But a spoon works, guys. I'm not going to lie. I love using a spoon. Um, if you have the coordination, I have the coordination for one eyeball to be able to use the spoon. The spoon. And my one eyeball always looks so much better than the other eyeball because you'll see um, my coordination on the other side with the spoon is not as graceful. We all know that opening our mouth and our mascara helps a ton. I don't care who you are. If you don't open your mouth putting on mascara, who are you? I literally have tried keeping my mouth shut doing mascara. It does not work for me. I don't think I showed y'all what I, uh, mascara I was using. I will in another video. I know I do. Um, I just have to remember to keep doing that. Ooh, that's attractive. I love y'all being able to see my mouth like that. So we are definitely going to work on our camera angles. Because y'all don't need to be seeing down my tonsils. That, that was attractive. Ooh, she cute. I do use two different kind of mascara, um, specifically because the brushes each do something a little different than the other. And I really like, again, this is, these are e.l.f. mascaras, so I really like their mascara as well. They're affordable, and they work really well. Ugh, 
little thing that I'm getting also goes underneath my eyes. So you see how like I have that little patch of black from the mascara from doing the lure lashes. Yeah, it prevents that. So I don't have to deal with cleaning up the mascara mess afterwards, which I do with for certain makeup. Um, sometimes when I have more of the black eyeliner undertones, I leave it because I do like that darker ness that it puts there. But you can see I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix where the mascara hit. Um, I'm kind of glad that you can see the difference whenever I look down. You can see that the right is really done with that mascara and the left is not. So you can tell there is a real big difference when you use mascara. Um, it's a little more dramatic. But like I said, I'm definitely super excited for this new product I'm going to buy. Um, I'm really, really hoping it works out because I really don't like using anything that harms my body or hair, especially my hair. My hair is my favorite feature. Even though it's colored. And it's going to always be colored because I love coloring my hair. I'm going to actually try and do some videos of y'all seeing how I color my hair. I've had a lot of people ask me how I do it. Um, specifically, actually, I get a lot of people that ask who do it. And then I tell them me. And then they want to know how I do it. It's To me, it's super simple. Um, but to me, makeup is super simple. So I've, I've never had thought of it being something that's hard for people to do or um, need more instruction. I've always been kind of a hands-on learner, so I've always been able to teach myself how to do everything. Um, and I know that makes me different than everybody else. I'm obviously not. There's certain people that are much more visually um, visual learners, and so uh, I can definitely see how videos will help y'all learn how to do certain things that I've learned how to do without having to go through the struggles and the pain of learning what I should and shouldn't do. Um, prime example, do unless you want to be super, super bright with your colors, don't ever put like a white base for your eyes and then put the color on because um, you will look neon. I mean, if that's what the style you're going for, which we will do a neon style for sure, but um, unless that's the look you're going for, like super, super, super duper bright, don't do it. Because in the day, it is noticeable. I mean, I do it. But if you don't want to be noticed that much, I would not suggest being that bright during the day. At night, for sure. Go for it, babes. But day look color, probably not using white. Again, disregard this. Do not use lash curlers. I am being a dummy dum. I'm going to get a new thing. We're not doing that anymore. We're not hurting my eyeballs. Um, in other videos, you're going to see I stopped using it, actually. I actually just use mascara by itself. And it doesn't work as good, obviously, curling. But um, I'm not damaging my my uh, eyelashes, so I really don't care. So you'll see I won't use any lash curler whatsoever in the future. Oh, I don't think I did I not even I didn't even bother trying to use the spoon on this side because the spoon does not work for me on that side. I am incapable. No coordination for that. And also, just gonna let y'all know, I get I do I mark my I always do my eyes first, okay? Um, because I am messy. Again, I will repeat that. And when I'm doing my mascara, I get super close with the wand to my face. And you'll probably see it soon. I, it won't surprise me if you start seeing a black mark on my face. Um, I touch my face with that wand. And then I have a black line. And then I have to get rid of the black line. And that's pretty much every single time I do makeup. But I like getting super close with the wand. And like really getting in there with that mascara. So I want it to stay and look really, really good. And natural. I try and make it look natural. I mean, mascara can only make things look as natural as it can, but. Mm. 
can't just fill them in. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going in and I'm cleaning that mascara back up. Because it made a little line there. And I'm just going to clean it up, make it disappear. Add a little more color. A little more sparkle. I love to sparkle. I do use the end, sorry, my voice cracked. I do use the end of a brush to try and kind of push it up from the bottom to try and lift them a little more. This does work. It does help. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm ready for a tool to help with this. And trying to make sure everything looks good. Okay, I don't think I'm showing you what concealer I'm using, but this is my darker concealer. I always go in. Oh, there we go. Um, this is the darker concealer. It's about slightly a shade um, darker than I am. And this is what I use actually to do my contouring. I do it with concealer. So you saw I put that one line over here. And I try and crease cut it as best I can. I mean, it always gets buffed out in the end, but definitely try and make your lines similar. I always try and go to a certain spot on my mouth with both lines so that my lines do match. Yeah, and I can't wait for another camera. Y'all will be able to see a little bit better of a difference when I'm doing it. got the black off there okay maybe this will show you a little bit better and we're just contouring I'm a little I have a little bit of a double chin don't know if you noticed um, if you did we're not gonna talk about it so I have a way of contouring to try and make sure that double chin doesn't, isn't as noticeable when I'm done with makeup. Um, so I'm contouring in my face shape. I don't necessarily want to do a, how I specifically contour tutorial. I mean, I do, I'm showing you what I'm doing right here, but this is for my specific face shape, my specific size as a person. Um, I never suggest anyone to follow contouring according to how you see it online by so how they're putting it on by like who you're seeing because they're all different and you know we may have the same shape size but you also may be thinner than me or bigger than me and you need to contour a little different for you know what you're wanting to hide and what you're wanting to really highlight so I always definitely suggest um, Go look at your body type, look at your face type, and kind of see what fits there. If you need to look at someone who fits your face type like, like me, and you want to see how I contour, and then go to someone who's thinner, who has a similar face type, you can see how they do it, and you can kind of cross-reference. Um, every time I've tried doing it by a actual graph or anything I've gotten online, 
my face looks super weird and it doesn't make me feel like I look any better. And I always talk to people about how I look. Um, I like being told if I look, if something looks off because I want to fix it. Um, if my makeup's too dark, my makeup's too light, if I have too much on, if it's too cakey, you know, I like that feedback. So, um, when I did contouring according to like an actual, uh, graph, I've never gotten a whole lot of compliments on how my contouring looks. I get a lot more co uh, compliments on the way I do it. And again, like I said, it's because I've learned my face shape and I know what size I am. I know, um, I am one who started working out and getting back to being healthy and everything like that. Um, luckily our jobs are allowing us to get more back into the healthy lifestyle. So I'll be able to start losing more weight and working out more and making dinners that are healthy instead of us eating out, you know, the classic dilemma. But I do contour to my face, and I don't think I'll ever really make y'all go through this process with me every single time. I think everyone's more happy with my eye makeup, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Like I said, um, my face is my face and completely n normal for me and completely my own, not anybody else's. So watching me contour and doing all that really doesn't help anybody else because, like I said, you have to learn your own shape. You have to learn your body. Um, you have to learn what's good for you. Like, I can definitely suggest great products, but I'm not going to tell you to do your face exactly like mine because we're different. And you got to be your own person and you got to definitely look like you. I don't want you to have to look, want to look exactly like me. I want you to be the most beautiful you ever. So, like I said, you know, you can go and charge. Um, it's what helped me learn what worked and what really didn't work you know it is a learning process you're not going to just throw makeup on and um or do the exactly what i'm doing and just assume oh you know i'm gonna look exactly like that mm, most of the time it doesn't really work that way because like i said we're all different and then you get upset because you know i don't look like that it doesn't match how hers looks to mine and it gets depressing so i just want you to really really understand you know you're beautiful as you and make sure you do your contact contouring and your facial shapes for yourself. You know, I would love to look like so many other people, but I don't, I look like me and you can definitely change your face for sure with contouring. You can definitely do that. But like I said, why would you want to? You're beautiful you. So stay that way. I get a lot of makeup on my mouth, just saying. Pretty much my pretty pink lips turn into normal neutral tones because I put all my makeup on and usually gets in my mouth. So my mouth changes color. And then you'll see I'll wipe that off and we'll be back to pink again. I definitely want to get two different brushes to contour with. Um, I use the same brush for the dark colors and the light colors, which makes it muddy sometimes. So um, what you saw me with my head down, I was actually cleaning off the brush because it had so much product on it. And I know a lot of people suggest the little, um, the little poopies. I can't think of their name right now. The blending brush, the blending, yeah, not brush, blending, um, sponge. That's what the word is. The blending sponge. A lot of people suggest that, but I actually do not like blending sponges. They actually create a lot of bacteria. They are very difficult to clean to make sure they get a hundred percent clean and disinfected. Um, I just never have had any good results. Oh, I'm doing my neck now. Um, yes. So I do that because like I said, I have a double chin. So I try and hide that as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to try and get two brushes so that I can contour with two separate brushes and I don't muddy my colors. If you're able to have two brushes that you can use for your concealer contouring, definitely do so. Um, like I said, it's, it's helpful. You don't muddy. But I am working with what I got, people.
And sometimes that's what we all have to do. Double check your lineage is right. I've had that happen a few times where I have done my neckline and it does not look cute. Because I was in a rush and I did not blend well. Doing cleaning it. I guarantee that's what I'm doing. Cleaning. I'm also going to have to show y'all for sure the um, makeup cleaner bowl thingy that I got for my makeup brushes. They are getting super nasty, so I am definitely going to have to do a video on how I clean my brushes soon. I'm excited for that. I have a lot of different brushes. I have really pretty ones, and then I have plain ones, but it's always nice to have a good array of brushes, I say. I always think it's really good to have a good set up of brushes. Man, I am cleaning that thing. I don't know why though, because I think I finished my face already. I think I'm probably cleaning it to put it away so it's not as dirty next time. I'm also going to try and find better brushes. Um, these are pretty much Amazon buys. Uh, I want to try and find really good brush sets. But, again, finances put me in a little bit of a crunch on that, so. Alright, and then I just go in with a setting powder that matches my skin tone. To my neck, of course. And I just kind of work my way up. I go neck to forehead. I don't know why I go neck to forehead, but I do. I don't think I've ever started at my forehead and gone down. I think I've always gone up. I think for me, going upwards means you're pulling your skin back and tighter and more uplifting. I think that's my my brain's process of doing that. I'm not quite sure why I do that. Doing these videos has really made me discover a lot of the things I do to myself that I'm like, why, why do I do that? What did my brain tell me? Does that make sense? I didn't show you what powder I was using. That's cool. I can tell you right now it's e.l.f. I use e.l.f. everything pretty much. Except for my eye makeup. I don't have a whole lot of e.l.f. products for my eye makeup. I get my eye makeup from a bunch of different places actually. Oh, that was cute. Just a little bit of the powder fly. Fireworks. So you can kind of see with uh, me putting power powder on. You can see the sheen, that bright sheen from the concealer going away. It's kind of mattifying. I'm not so shiny anymore. Okay, cute. Oh, look at me. I'm showing you what I'm using for my blush. And that is e.l.f. Also, go figure. I love e.l.f. I'm probably never, ever going to abandon e.l.f. They're amazing. Okay, so I think I'm using the dual um, blush. Yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the dual blush effect. So I'm doing more of a skin tonier color of a blush up around my eyes and around my higher part of my cheekbone. Um, I do this sometimes when I'm going to have my hair down. Um, basically because if I put too much pink around my eyes and my higher cheekbones, it looks like I'm hot and that's not a really cute look. So then I go in and I usually put like a lighter pink, see right there around my little cheekies so that my cheekies pop, but my whole face doesn't look like I've been running for a mile and that's not cute. I do a big... <laughs> I do big cheeks, and I've always done big cheeks. Um, I was bigger in high school, so to me, big cheeks were cute. I still do that, actually. It's, again, like I said, doing these videos is very humbling, because I'm like, mm, I should probably not do that anymore. I don't, I'm not as big as I was in high school, so my cheeks are not that big. I should probably not do that anymore. The things you learn, guys. I'm actually going to highly suggest everyone record themselves so that they can be like, hmm, 
Why do I do that? Learn things about yourself. Grow as a person, guys. Okay, she's cute. She cute. Okay. Gotta make sure my color's right. And like I said, the new camera is gonna show color better. Because when, when I turn my face, you can see the pink. And then when I look at the camera, there is none there, guys. That is not a good way of showing y'all. Oh, I must have did it too dark. So I'm going over with powder again. Um, probably to blend it and to probably lighten it up a bit. Because like I said, I don't like looking like I've been running. I don't run, first of all. If I ever, if you ever see me running, there is an actual problem and you should run as well. Because... It is very rare I will run. I do not like running. I hurt my leg when I was in high school. So running is also painful. So I don't necessarily want to do something that's painful. So running's not the vibe. Not sorry about it. Okay, cleaning up my mouth. Yep. And, okay, so that was a little grody, and, but I have makeup in my nose, and I don't know if anyone else does that. Um, I don't ever see cute girls do that, but I'm a, I'm a freak, so I don't care that you see me do that, because, like I said, it happens to everybody. I got makeup on my nose, and sometimes it bothers me, so, yeah, I'll fix it with my finger. Or a Q-tip. Normally, it's a Q-tip. Um, because if I use my finger, I smear the makeup around my nose holes, and then it looks funky, so I usually use a Q-tip, but I guess I didn't have any at that present time. I guess I'm searching for an animal that won't leave me alone. I have three moles on my left side of my face, guys, that go away every time I put on makeup. Um, I do redraw them on. I do get made fun of by people that know me all my life because they're like, you don't have those. But when I don't have makeup on, they're like, oh, you do have those. I'm like, I do. I just draw them on darker because the makeup takes them away. And I love my moles. It looks like a constellation on my face. Um, I don't know. It's always been something I've always loved about my moles. Um, I have always seen it as a star constellation. So I thought they've always been cute. So I'm always going to do that. And I think I'm done with my video, guys. I appreciate y'all. Um, thanks for watching, and like I said, this is our very first video. I will have other ones out shortly. I really, really, really appreciate y'all powering through with me um, and working with me as I get better because, like I said, it's going to be a process.